Welcome to our Big Gutsy one-on-one -on -one show where I interview Gutsy people. Today, I'm super excited to have Alisa Cleland as a guest on the show. Um, Alisa was born with a rare condition called PTH, which we'll get into later, but it means that she had to have uh, one of her lower leg amputated. Um, but that didn't stop her from uh, being active and winning silver medal with the US Paralympic uh, youth team for sitting volleyball at the Rio Olympics. And she's uh, now a paradresser rider and also very big on TikTok with over uh, 500,000 fo followers or as you call them friends. So I'm a, <laughs> I, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, um, of you, Alisa. And also I love the fact that no matter what your circumstances, you kind of show that, you know, you, you should not be worried to experiment and follow your passion. And I, uh, I love the high energy that you show uh, during, you know, all your experiences. So welcome, Alisa, uh, on the Thank show you. today. Uh, how Thank are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's just a nice afternoon here in Dallas. So no complaints. <laughs> all right. Well, I, it was not, you know, not so long ago. It was not so great for you guys. You had a, you had a deep freeze and so on. So how did you guys kind of uh, deal with it? Uh, in in Dallas and especially we, for Andy, your horse, it must have been a scary, a scary, a scary time for you guys. Yeah. Um, so I live about thirty minutes from Andy, um, and I actually don't own Andy, which thank God, because um, <laughs> I was actually trapped basically in my house um, for about three or four days. Um, I didn't have power Crazy. mainly. I still had water, which was great, but um, power was gone couldn't use my phone it was just really scary and then at Andy's place um the pipes burst there was no water in the barn or the house and so it's just like a scary situation um but luckily you know it ended we got through it um I'm lucky enough that I always keep some extra stuff on hand just in case you never know um but it did suck but in so you guys are good I moved, I can say go ahead you guys are good huh Yes, now we are finally back to normal. Hallelujah. <laughs> all right, all right. So let's get into it. Um, I know that you had a lot of adversity from the get-go. You were born in Ukraine as an orphan and uh, with a rare condition, one in a million people uh, called PTH, and also with a, another condition where you have four fingers on your, uh, on, on yes. your, on your hands, right? Um, I'm not going to say this right, but it's called ectrodactyly right yeah that was actually like pretty spot on so do you want to explain for our listeners um you know what those conditions are and so on yeah so pth um is short for praxial tibial hemimelia and basically all this means is that my right uh tibia which is your large lower leg bone or your shin bone um just didn't like grow at all like it was just non-existent and so um, I was born in Ukraine and they didn't really have the like medical technology or whatever or anything. Um, so when I got back, when I got adopted and came to the U.S., mm -hmm. um, I had um, an amputation to cut off my right lower leg. So that way um, I could wear prosthetics and stuff. And I've been wearing prosthetics basically ever since then. And then with the hands, um, I do only have four fingers on each hand. Um, it's called ectrodactyly. Yes, um, there are. A variety of different kind of like um i don't know what the word is like there's different types of ectrodactyly so like uh, i have ectrodactyly but my version of it could be different than someone else's version of it you know um so there's no real like this is always what it's going to be so for mine um i'm just missing my middle fingers and if you look in x-rays um the middle knuckle actually conjoins in with both of my ring fingers. Um, so it's really interesting. Um, it hasn't stopped me from like doing anything. Um, and yeah, it's just kind of what I have. <laughs> and so you, it is a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And so moving to the US at four, I assume you obviously growing around kids, um, you know, when you when you have um, those conditions can be challenging because kids can be mean, you know, when you're different a little bit. Um, and also, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure nowadays also now with your presence on social media, um, you know, it's another outlet for people to potentially bully and, and so on. So how has been for you that experience of, of being very different from anybody and, and, kind of, and, and kind of coping? And I know that we'll talk about sport and how sport has played a huge role in your life for that next. But uh, yeah. how, has, how has that played for you kind of with people, um, really? Um, 
I think it's definitely made me be more careful about like who I let into my life. Um, I have a very small like friend circle and I have my entire life. I'm just, I'm like not popular, but I'm like the kid that everyone knows in school, you know, right. like, oh, that one, like a girl, I know her. Um, so it always kind of felt like I was like a zoo and like an animal, like in a zoo exhibit, you know, it's like everyone knows me, but like no one knows me. And so um, it was just super lonely um, is really what it was. And, you know, it could be hard at times. Um, and then now as an adult with social media, um, I've been really lucky that I haven't had a lot of hate come my way. Um, not to say that I haven't had any, because I definitely had, but people have been so nice and so supportive. And honestly, I, like, I know the people that do send hate my way or bully or whatever, um, you know, I just know that they're not as secure in themselves and that's okay. Um, you know, I'll let you, I'll, <laughs> I'll be your punching bag. Um, I'm really confident in myself and just with my life. And so I just try not to let it like bother me or get to me. And I just know that like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep going. Awesome. And so, you know, talking about a way to cope with, with being different like that, uh, you, I mean, I know that sports started to play a, a big role in your life at a very young age. You, you know, you, you never let your, you, or you never seen yourself as, as someone disabled and you, you've always kind of pursued and tried different sports from a young age of six, you started experimenting with surfing and horse riding, which we'll talk later, obviously, and swimming. And also, you know, you played volleyball in high school for your, for your, for your high school. So what, how did that motivation of like doing so many sports like that at such a young age uh, came about for you? Um, so my parents are marathoners. Um, so like that's all they do, they just run marathons. I hate running personally. I'm not um, a big fan but... of running, but. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not <laughs> um but you know so they were always active and they were always trying to get me to like run and be in races and I was like I hate running and so I think that's kind of why I went to other sports um so that way I could still be active and stuff but then you know I wasn't doing something I didn't want to do um and so yeah I started getting into horseback riding my cousins had horses so um you know we would regularly see them um surfing I I haven't done it in so long just because I don't live near an ocean, <laughs> sure, yeah. but you know, um, I grew up in California. So obviously um, I did it quite a bit. And I also served with Bethany Hamilton, which is super cool. Um, and then, yeah, going up into like high school and stuff, um, I discovered volleyball and then sitting volleyball and that just kind of spiraled into stuff. Um, but yeah, so, I've. Go so ahead. tell me talking about sitting volleyball. Um, how, I mean, obviously you, you'd kind of discovered it and you moved to, uh, I believe to, to Oklahoma and then you ended up going to Rio with this. So tell us a bit more about how did you end up in Oklahoma and kind of like playing singing volleyball like that? Yeah. So, um, I played volleyball in high school and, um, I worked kind of closely with, um, this organization called, uh, Challenge Athletes Foundation. And one of the guys that works there is actually on the men's Paralympic sitting volleyball team. And so I would play with him all the time while I was still in California in high school. And then um, I moved to Oklahoma for college. And the college I went to was the same college that the women's uh, Paralympic sitting volleyball team trained at. So I trained with them every single morning for about two years. Um, and in that two years, I did grow a lot and learn a lot. And sitting volleyball is so much fun. Um, and I did go to Brazil uh, with the Paralympic youth team, which was super, super fun. Yeah. And, um, you know, we trained so hard for that. And it was just an amazing experience. And honestly, like thinking about it now, like the way it all like came together, like it's just so like bizarre. It was like the right place at the right time, you know? And so um, yeah, I that's still do pretty play. impressive. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um I still do play volleyball um every now and again but yeah sitting volleyball is this a whole nother level of sport and all the girls and guys that like play on that team you know they're missing legs missing arms sometimes one sometimes more and you know they just they just don't let them stop them and That's you know awesome. they keep doing what they love yeah. and I mean same with me you know so. awesome all right, so you, you um, what a great journey. So you, you uh, were playing and you achieved a high level and all of a sudden you're like, you know, I'm not really 
I'm kind of plateauing in my progress on ceiling volleyball. And so you end up by moving to Texas and you pivot and you to pursue a dream of yours when you were a kid to, um, to train to be a Paralympic dressage rider. Um, how did that kind of switch happen? Because that's quite a big, uh, a big shift per se. Um, it is a big shift. And I think the biggest shift for me um, was that I was, uh, I'm not a big team player. Um, I'm really not it's something that I know about myself though. And something that oh. I work on, <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, just being two years in that kind of environment and, you know, I wasn't, um, anyone like super special on the team. I was just on the team. And so like trying to like figure out, trying to navigate, which is not something I wanted to do anymore. So I decided to go back to horses, um, because one, it's just you and the horse, which is great. Um, and two, it's something that I still had a passion for. And so, Someone told me about a Paralympic trainer um, in the Dallas, Texas area. And so I left Oklahoma, left college, left volleyball um, and moved to Texas Amazing. and started training with uh, this coach. And I trained with him for about a year, showed for about a year. It got really expensive, really fast. So I stopped. <laughs> um, and, you know, I, I do hope someday that I go to the Paralympics Um but it takes a lot of, you know, you need really fancy horses, a lot of money, a lot of time, which, you know, I have the time. Um, but, you know, so hopefully that's still like in the parks for me, but even just riding Andy, like it's just so like fulfilling. And the fact that I can do it like independently and not have to rely on anyone else. When I started training with that coach, um, you know, I didn't have my riding prosthetic leg. So I rode without a leg and mm -hmm. like, it was great and it worked, but like, I couldn't go on trail rides. I couldn't ride alone. I couldn't, you know, there are all these things. And so, um, it's cool to see like how I started there and like where I am now with Andy. And like, even though I'm no closer to the Paralympics per se, I'm like in a much better spot I feel like and with like training and stuff you know I know so much more from all the trainers that I've had the pleasure of working with since I've come to Dallas and tell us a bit more about Andy I saw some amazing pictures of you guys that we will share with our <laughs> listeners and uh, um, you know I know it's not your horse but uh, I'm sure you're very attached to to Andy tell us a bit more about Andy I am very attached to Andy. So Andy is an 18 year old um, Arabian. He used to do dressage back in his day with his owner. Um, but now that he's kind of an older guy, he's kind of out of shape. <laughs> and so um, I'm just there really to make sure that he stays in shape um, and just to keep him exercised. Um, yeah. A lot of people with like older horses will just kind of let them go and be pasture buddies. Um, but with Andy, um, I don't own him. I do lease him. Um, but I mean, I've pretty much been given like free reign to do whatever I want with him, which is, you know, amazing. And yeah. so um, we always, I mean, we always ride dressage. Like there's no other way to ride. And so it's nice to have him to um, keep me up to date with like, dressage you know because obviously if I'm not showing it regularly um, I feel like I'd be missing out but I do work with a trainer um, and I do you know keep up to date with like USCF and say sport and all that fun stuff so I'm staying in the community um, and then yeah and then just sharing my life with Andy on social media has also been so incredible and like everyone loves him <laughs> yeah absolutely absolutely and we, you took some pictures with Gazi and Andy too so which yes. <laughs> which we liked but uh you know you talk about I mean it's it is a challenge um as far as the sport is not cheap and you know and it's also a, a, you know a community that can be tight um so you, you um you have kind of um found a way to kind of finance some of it obviously not all of it yet but hopefully soon and so social media for you has become a big outlet uh in terms of you know helping you finance your your passion for horses and dressage and and so on and you became huge on social media i mean you have i think yeah five hundred thousand followers on of friends as you say right? <laughs> on tiktok um with you know i, I was checking you have 8.3 million likes on your stuff it's that's crazy <laughs> phenomenon and uh you're pretty big on instagram too um how, how does one become so popular like this on uh on those platforms right um <laughs> it takes a lot of time 
Um, I will say I'm about to hit the four year anniversary of having my Instagram. Um, so it's, you know, taken four years of really hard work and um, just sharing my story over and over and over again. And, you know, I know that not all parts of it are going to click with people, but I feel like certain parts will. I'm like, that's all I need. And, um, you know, I feel like I'm a very like open and honest person. And like, if things don't go well, then they don't go well. I don't try to like hide that back, you know, yeah. and I feel like with social media, like a social media, you can show literally, you, you can show any side of you that you want to, you know? Mm-hmm. And so obviously people are just going to show the good sides, which is, that's great. And that's fine. But like, that's not life, you know, it's not real. And yeah. so I think the reason that I have grown a following is because, you know, I'm very real about the trials and, you know, the bad times about life and also about living with a prosthetic, you know, obviously it's not something that everyone has to do or, you know, gets yeah. opportunity to. Um, and so people find it really interesting. And so, um, but yeah, it's been a lot of hard work, but I think the reason that I have gone the following I have is just because I'm authentic and I, who I am, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I, I think people can just like smell through fake stuff really fast. You well, know? More, more and more. So I think now, I think there's a, there's a fatigue of, of, of people pretending to be someone else or something else on social media a lot more. And like, you know, I think people are kind of starting to kind of get over some of that stuff, but, uh, if you had to kind of pick you or know, give advice to, to some folks that want to become successful um, on TikTok, for example, what, what will you pick? I'm, I know you just mentioned uh, being authentic and yourself, uh, but it also needs to be entertaining, right? So what will you say as a few other things for the recipe to kind of work? Just to, <laughs> even uh, for us, because we're not, we're just starting on, on TikTok with Gutsy. We have probably 30 followers. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you excited know? to take over your Gutsy though. I'll I know. Be- I know next month we are very excited about doing that with you guys. uh, So yes, absolutely. Um, I guess my biggest piece of advice is to post what you want to post and to do what you want to do, because there's always going to be someone to tell you like, Hey, like, I don't think that's going to work out. I don't think that's a good idea. But then like, what if like, that's like the one idea or like the one video that like, boom, makes it for you, you know? And to think like you might have almost just given up your shot. So I, I heavily rely on my own intuition and my own gut feeling um, to know, you know, what is good and what is bad for me. And sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. But yeah, go with your gut feeling and just do what you want to do. Have fun. Like there's no one telling you like what you can and can't do. Yeah. Like, you know, just do it. Absolutely. And so I'm, I'm sure, it, you know, obviously it takes quite a bit of your time because it's, you know, it's a job. Huh? You have when you. It's a, it, it needs like everything. If you want to succeed in things, you have to put the time. And so how do you feel, how do you feel that kind of like uh, distract you to in a certain way of your, your goals with horse riding and, and dressage? Uh, to, or how do you balance the two together? Because you need both actually, right? So to make it work. Yeah. yeah. Um, the way I balance it is I'm, I, I have my routines and I'm such like a routine based person that like, I, I can't live without it, but I, I mean, I wake up at the same time every day. Um, either I ride Andy or I work out and I always get home around like 1030, shower, put a few blocks for like work where I don't look at my phone. I don't, you know, I just work and focus on whatever videos need to get made or whatever emails need to get sent or, you know, um, and then I block out some time for relaxing and dinner and then I go to bed. And so um obviously the work is super important and also like Andy and stuff is super important too because I don't want to just let myself get buried in work I want to have some fun I want to go out and do stuff so I think um creating a routine that works for you especially I mean just as you said we're all working from home right so like our Mm -hmm. home is our office now and I feel like it can be really hard for some people to really discern like home time versus work time and so really having a clear routine helps me fit all of that because yeah, in order to make Andy work and in order for me to get more horses, I need my work to work. And that means I have to work while I'm working. Like I can't just have the TV on and work, you know, it doesn't work. I need to be focused. So routines are what helps me balance it all. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. it, uh, I just love it. (laughs) That's awesome. I mean, it did um, help me routine really helped me too during uh, COVID-19 to kind of, not get off the rail and 
distracted yeah. with all kind of stuff or you know freaking out and just kind of like focusing on like having patterns it's very important and repetition you know uh, yeah. when you look at you know successful people like at every level every sport or every industry it's kind of one of the big things so uh, i do relate to what you're saying there for sure so tell me like what's um i mean you've done so much and so many different you know stuff like from you know ceiling volleyball to you know horse, horse riding and dressage and and so on like what's next for you like what, what's uh what i mean i'm sure you, you still want to become a paralympic uh, dressage rider i'm sure so What's what's your dreams for the future and like what 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 do you see next happening for for you in the next you know few months to few years or <laughs> um I think what's next for me is I really want to get kind of focused on like the back side of my business, so like merchandise, getting my website back up to date. So that way that can all be working for me while I'm focusing on other stuff. Um so definitely that I would love to. I don't know, like the thing with like, because I'm not like, I don't feel like an entrepreneur, but I guess I am. <laughs> well, yeah, and, you are, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's like, I never know where my next thing is like coming from, you know, it's like one day I'll get like an email, like, hey, do you want to like do something with this or like a text, like, hey, do you want to go? Like, I just kind of go with the flow, you know, I don't really have anything like planned. Um, as far as Andy goes, I do have a plan and that is just to ride him until I'm told I cannot. <laughs> um, I do think down the line, um, obviously I want to get my own horse, yeah. um, but I think that's going to come later down the line once I own my own property, just because having a horse off property is no bueno. Um, yeah. And then also with the whole storm situation, I would hate to like be here in my house and then so far away from my horse, not able to do anything. Um, so yeah, I think right now I'm just kind of, you know, letting life just do its thing and i'm just going to keep working on whatever my business is and then just focusing on loving andy and getting the most out of him that i can so All right well we are we're very excited about you know what you've achieved so far but also about what's what's more to come a lot more is to come so um, we are very excited to be partner with with you as well at Gets the Organic. I, love I have like a hundred of your pouches in my fridge. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, thank you so much for being uh, on the show. It's our fir third episode today. So I was very sure. excited to have you on the show and um, stay gutsy out there. Yeah, <laughs> stay gutsy. Thank you so much for having me on. Take care.